More than three decades ago, Formula One witnessed some of its most extraordinary technological advancements. The cars were equipped with automatic self-adjusting suspension systems that dynamically moved to enhance grip and overall performance. This innovation proved highly effective until concerns about safety led to its prohibition in the sport. Yet, the question remains, how exactly did such suspension trickery boost a car's capabilities? Getting into the intricacies, one wonders how such complex systems operated with the technology available at the time. Furthermore, why hasn't modern Formula One adopted similar suspension setups? Stay tuned as we explore these intriguing questions. Take a look at this onboard footage featuring the Williams FW14B. Notice the remarkable stability of the car with minimal body roll through the corners. Contrasting this with the McLaren from the same year reveals the instability and pronounced roll caused by its conventional spring and damper suspension system. The Williams' superiority, especially evident at circuits like Spa and Imola, is striking. Nigel Mansell and Riccardo Patrese benefit from the new active suspension system. Unlike traditional metal springs, this innovative setup utilizes high-pressure hydraulics, resulting in exceptional stability and performance. At circuits like Spa, the Williams appears exceptionally stable thanks to its groundbreaking system that automatically adjusts stiffness and ride height for every corner on the track. The concept was conceived by the renowned designer Frank Derny and was dubbed Active Suspension. When combined with new technologies like traction control and semi-automatic gearboxes, the 1992 Williams became virtually unstoppable. To this day, it holds the title of the most dominant car in Formula One history. It was a remarkable machine to drive, demanding physical effort, but delivering immense satisfaction. Interestingly, Williams wasn't the pioneer of active suspension. Lotus was the first to experiment with it in the Type 92 back in 1983. However, it took a decade for active suspension to reach its peak and start dominating championships. Lotus's development of the system stemmed from necessity as they faced issues with poor poising due to the ground effect cars of that era. These cars utilized undertray to generate downforce by accelerating air and creating low pressure beneath the car. While this technology significantly reduced lap times, it posed challenges on bumpy surfaces, leading to the phenomenon of porpoising, where the car would experience an unsettling resonant effect when encountering large bumps. This alteration to the ground effect had a significant impact. By shifting the downforce further rearward, it caused a violent rocking sensation, which was terrifying for drivers and resulted in a completely uncontrollable car. The only way for a driver to halt this motion was to apply the brakes, thereby compromising their lap time. Lotus's next attempt to address this issue involved stiffening the suspension to counter the rocking. Unfortunately, this adjustment merely transferred the problem to the tires, causing the car to bounce unpredictably. Peter Wright, the chief aerodynamicist at Lotus, proposed an innovative solution, replacing the traditional spring and damper system with what he termed a synthetic spring. This system utilized a hydraulic ram equipped with rapid-acting electronically controlled valves. While effectively minimizing the poor poising effect, this new system also brought about significant changes. It allowed the car to maintain the optimal ride height for ground effect, crucial for maximizing aerodynamic downforce generated by both the front and rear wings. The drawback of traditional suspension systems employing springs is their inability to maintain consistent ride heights, leading to fluctuations in the car's grip and balance. By exerting tighter control over ride heights, it became possible to push the boundaries of aerodynamic design further. This control not only enhanced aerodynamic grip, but also mechanical grip. The innovative system could adjust the stiffness of active springs on each corner of the car dynamically. This allowed for precise manipulation of the downward pressure on each tire, maximizing grip across all four corners. By measuring the downward pressure on the tires, the system could then adjust the car's suspension stiffness accordingly to ensure an optimal grip level for real-time adjustments to the car's balance. In tighter turns, the rear ride height would increase to enhance grip on the front wheels, facilitating sharper cornering. Conversely, in higher speed turns, the rear ride height would decrease, improving rear stability and enabling smoother rotation of the car. Despite its advantages, the system had its drawbacks. It added an extra 10 to 12 kilograms to the car's weight and could lead to unpredictability if not programmed correctly. Additionally, in the early 1990s, when this system was in use, it siphoned about 5% of power from the already less potent Renault engine. 
This power loss stemmed from the hydraulic pump being directly driven off the crankshaft. Despite the Renault engine's lower power output compared to competitors like the Honda 510, it was favored for its lighter weight, making it widely regarded as the best engine on the grid. Initially, Nigel Mansell was hesitant about the system and refused to race the car until his teammate Nelson Piquet won at Monza. After this success, Mansell insisted on the team building an entirely new car before the next race in Estoril. While the Lotus team approached the active suspension issue by focusing on ride height quality, Williams took a different route. Frank Derny, the designer of the Williams active suspension, prioritized the aerodynamic benefits achievable through precise control of the car's ride height. Derny famously disregarded concerns about ride height quality, stating, I don't give a damn about ride height quality. All I wanted to do was make the car go quicker. Initially, Williams' system lacked predictive capabilities for corners or loads. Instead, it reacted to them, earning it the name reactive suspension. This system utilized hydraulic actuators to stabilize the car throughout the lap, eliminating the need for any kind of roll bars. Williams collaborated with Automotive Products, a company that had already been developing a similar system for the Ford Granada, albeit released five years later. Remarkably, the system implemented in the F1 car closely resembled that of the Granada. In 1992, the Williams active suspension underwent a significant revival. The team overcame the technical hurdles of integrating a computer into the car, which was a more complex task back then than it is today. They successfully developed a car capable of learning a circuit. This highly intricate system continuously made adjustments to counteract oversteer or understeer, fine-tuning the car's performance through every corner. Williams introduced a new feature to their car, a button on the dashboard that lowered the car's ride height on straights, effectively stalling the diffuser. This enhancement allowed the car to achieve speeds up to 10 km per hour faster on straights. This innovation bore resemblance to the modern drag reduction system, TRS. Drivers utilized this button on every straight, although they needed to remember to release it before reaching the braking point. Nigel Mansell, in particular, sometimes forgot to do so due to his inclination to push the car to its limits. Remarkably, the onboard computers could anticipate significant bumps on the circuit, a notable example being the 1992 Monaco Grand Prix. The cars equipped with the Williams active suspension could traverse the large bump down to Mirabeau without veering off course. Even in contemporary Formula One, cars must navigate this bump with a less direct approach. The FW14B possessed the remarkable capability to adjust the front or rear ride height for each corner on the circuit while effectively managing the car's body roll. However, beyond these features, the car boasted one of the most impressive aerodynamic packages in the entire grid. This aerodynamic superiority was the primary factor behind Williams's dominance in 1992. The FW14B generated significantly more downforce than its competitors, giving Williams a substantial advantage. Lotus struggled to keep pace due to their inability to match this downforce production. Frank Derny engineered wings that were highly sensitive to changes in ride height, enhancing the aerodynamic efficiency of the system. Consequently, Williams could reduce drag and increase downforce, further solidifying their performance advantage. Combined with the superior Renault engine, an innovative semi-automatic gearbox, and an effective traction control system, the FW14B dominated the season. It secured victories in nine out of 16 races, clinching both the driver's championship with Nigel Mansell and the second position with Nelson Piquet. Mansell nearly doubled the points tally of his closest competitor, highlighting the car's exceptional performance. As is customary in Formula One, Williams kept the intricacies of their system tightly guarded, with many details remaining undisclosed to this day. They even went to the extent of attaching a large piece of suede to conceal the suspension system should a crash remove the car's nose and potentially reveal their secrets. Frank Derny, the system's architect, has declined to address inquiries regarding the unconventional layout of the actuators. He has stated that Williams intends to retain these secrets in anticipation of a potential resurgence of active suspension in Formula One. 
So why isn't active suspension a part of Formula One anymore? Well, while it's absent from F1, many road cars now feature sophisticated active suspension systems, drawing inspiration from Formula One technology. These systems offer improved cornering performance along with a smooth and comfortable ride. Typically, road cars utilize electromagnetic particles in their hydraulics to adjust the car's stiffness. Lexus, for instance, incorporated this technology into one of their models, significantly enhancing stability and control, even enabling the car to navigate small obstacles. However, in 1993, active suspension was banned in Formula One. F1 argued that the cars were becoming excessively peaky and aerodynamically unstable. The combination of escalating cornering speeds and unpredictable aerodynamics led to the blanket ban on active suspension. Interestingly, active suspension nearly staged an unexpected comeback in 2019. Formula One deliberated on legalizing it for the new 2021 regulations, citing advancements in technology, making the systems more affordable to design and implement. Moreover, modern cars already employ various hydraulic systems. Nonetheless, it was decided that reintroducing active suspension could compromise efforts to enhance the quality of racing. Teams might lean towards developing more sensitive aerodynamic packages, exacerbating the challenges of racing in turbulent air from cars ahead. If you found this discussion intriguing, you may enjoy other videos where I dissect the techniques of famous F1 drivers or explore the remarkable engineering behind Formula One. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.